Larson is suspended indefinitely. I'm a full-time dirt guy again. This is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. I didn't know what to expect. Larson went seven straight! That kind of started the domination. We have never seen a single season like that in the history of auto racing. Dude, champions, who do you guys play? Again? They play the same team tomorrow? No, who do you play tomorrow? Dad's slow. Dad's gonna run a B main tonight in a midget. In a midget? Yep. You have a midget? 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 Do you think he races too much? Yeah, he races too much. Because it is a lot on our family, it's overwhelming for me. I get burnt out very easily. This year I had like 140 races on my schedule. You get a little burnout at times because I don't get to experience much. Millbridge is super important in our lives right now because it's going to be Owen's childhood track. Race fans from all over the United States know about and want to come visit when they're in North Carolina. Kyle had two nights of racing at Millbridge and Owen kept saying, Dad, you gotta come watch my game, you gotta come watch my game. Owen started baseball and racing on his own, so it's hard to juggle all of that and be with Kyle. When's the championship game? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? That's it. That sucks. Can't go. I can't go. I think that really hurt Kyle's heart. So you guys made it to the finals? Yep, tomorrow night. You know, he's in his prime, so I always have to remind myself that he can't sustain that forever, so I want him to be able to live out his dream like he always has wanted to. It's September in Indiana, and all eyes in the dirt racing world are on the legendary Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where the BC39 is about to kick off, a race held in honor of the late Brian Clawson. Kyle Larson won the BC39 in 2021 and is striving to repeat history this year. But there's someone else at the track that's looking to give him a run for his money. Pulling in to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Today is heat race day at the BC39 USAC Midgets. They built a dirt track on the infield of the speedway. A more rubble strip, I can't help it, I want to go fast. The town is called Speedway, you know, and it's because of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and there's checkered flags everywhere. Indy is just huge to me, so I go right over to the Pagoda for no reason, just because I can, you know. It's the greatest facility in racing, I said it. Headed over to the driver's meeting. They have it over here in the office, right next to the Pagoda, it's pretty cool. It's a historic place for obvious reasons, but they build it up to feeling like a really big win. Getting that coin made with your picture on it and giving it to all the race teams, which it makes you feel like you won a special race. So this coin right. went to each of the 89 drivers and each of the owners of the team. Um, so we wanted to present you with the first one off the batch from, from Tim cool. and the Clawson family and from everybody here at the Speedway. Show. Yeah, thanks. No, I, I actually didn't know yeah. about this, so that's pretty cool. Before I forget, so I have a camera crew following me today. Big camera crew. I don't know really what it's about, but uh, pretty flattered that Flo chose me to do this uh, whatever they're doing so as always you know I'm complaining about my left first shock second row second row. row two. Oh yeah that's a good row 
That's a good row. There's a lot of rows here. You're going to be standing in the third row. Row three. I'm, I'm getting moved back. Get in the back. I'm getting moved back. Row three. I mean, anytime you show up to the pit area at USAC Midget Race, you know you're going to have to compete against Buddy, Justin Grant, and Timez. Yay, that was fast and painless. Any race that I watch and he's not on the podium, I just you know, shut my iPad off and, and move on. Um, but if Timez wins, I keep it up to watch his interviews because they're hilarious. Night one belongs to Timez, Thomas Mazzarol! I'm not going to forget it, and I'm sure McIntosh ain't going to because uh, I think the pressure got to him there, didn't it? Timez is a Timez is a character. He's a character. He's the biggest character in racing. I feel like. Absolutely, Timez is a character, I, and I always tell my friends like, I'm not Timez, I'm Thomas, but at the track, I'm I'm Timez. That's what I had to do to beat him, and that's what I did to beat him. The Thomas does come out, and that's the real serious one. That switch gets turned off, and here comes Timez. Thomas doesn't come out too often at the racetrack, though. And I think that's Timez. Very unhappy. Thomas, I don't even have the words for it. He is brutally honest. Thomas just honestly does, doesn't care what other people think. Whether you like it or don't like it, that's Thomas. One word to describe him is wild. Wild is a great way to describe him. Between his drifting cars, his one wheel that he cruises around the pit on. I'm gonna try not to fall off this thing. Just him behind the wheel of a race car. Down the back straightaway for the final time. End of three, no shoot out of four. Back Here comes Tevez! Defense, Tevez gets in the gas. Tevez wins night one of Midget Week. It's a breath of fresh air. Thomas Mesrol is worth the price of admission when he's just standing by his race car. How do I look to y'all now? I feel like he's the same guy you know, on this side of the camera as he is on the you know, back side of the camera. Where, where did that come from? Like, you know, just to say whatever the hell you want. It's not what I want. I want to say the right things. I want to say all the right things for all of you people out there, but I just say what I say because I'm a, I'm an emotional person, I guess. When somebody looks at me funny and it pisses me off, I stand on the loud pedal. You know, and then when I get out of the out of the car, I talk about it. Like, yeah, you pissed me off, and you know what? How you like me now? I stand on the gas as hard as I can if you piss me off. We well, you want to do it again anyhow. Yeah, I know, I know. This thing's. Uh, Backwards? So no, I just I had it on and it, that's off though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the other car I was in, it was the opposite. And yeah, that's that is actually open right there. That's shut. You should be rich right there. That should be the rich side. Is he right? Yep. They only go on one way, and I always I always forget which way they go. Yeah. That's 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 rich. That's rich in it. Okay. Well, then we'll leave it there. Okay. We'll take two. We are one of the few teams in midget racing that hire drivers. My drivers right now are Thomas Meserol and Justin Grant. Both of them have been really good for our team. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think we could win. And that without them, we are not able to win. Both Thomas and Justin come up to the shop. It's about a two hour drive for both of them to come up here. Cruise down to the shop. I've got a really great chief mechanic here who does majority of the work. They work with Lacey. So I've always wanted to bring somebody up in the ranks as a crew chief. At the racetrack, she's on Justin's car. I trust her on a daily and a nightly basis to prepare a race car that I'm gonna put my life on the line in. Should we wait for the cop to leave? Yeah, probably. Let me uh, get tight the wheels down too, it helps. Thomas was the first race car driver that trusted me to work on his car. Put that she-woman strength to it. He had no second doubts with me. That was a big turning point for me. I think you want to tear up. Why am I tearing up? I'm not gonna cry. I look like a little on the camera. <laughs> if 
He's gonna know I'm soft. I actually had no clue about open wheel racing before I actually started. When they first like invited me to the track, I just went there to watch. I immediately fell in love with it. I think it was the excitement, the back and forth between the drivers, not knowing if somebody was gonna wreck around this turn or not. Night one of the BC39 features the Stoops Pursuit, a unique elimination style exhibition race that's a blast for the fans, but not always as much fun for the drivers. So the Stoops race, you pretty much got to go forward. If you get past every five laps, they have a yellow and they kick out whoever got past. And the field shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. So you want to just kind of like move your way forward if you can or just maintain. But as soon as you go dead on the track, you're in the infield. It's great for the fans, great for the fans. Not too good for the car owners because a lot of cars get tore up because they put on a great show. The one year we had Michael Pickens driving for us with Kyle Larson and Justin Grant. It was the most entertaining race I'd ever seen. Whoa, there we go. Larson makes it go. There's the slider. Uh, there was only three of us left in the race, too. It was Michael Pickens, Justin Grant, and myself. Larson back to the inside, down in turn number three. He'll retake the lead. Justin Grant was kind of waiting in the wings. Michael and I were racing really hard and crossing each other over, sliding each other. There goes Pickens in front of him. But then we all wrecked on the last lap. Down the back straight away to turn number three. They oh! touch. Michael Pickens upside down. Larson stops. Grant flips. <laughs> Larson keeps going. What did we just see? It was crazy fun. Most exciting five lap shootout ever. And there's usually a wreck the very first corner every year. So I'm telling myself that I know there's gonna be a wreck. And just tiptoe through it. Let's miss this wreck and hopefully wipe out a lot of good cars and go race. It's time to drop the hammer. Got my eyes peeled wide open, waiting for this wreck. And sure enough, there it is. That's a caution flag, and boom, if you're involved in a caution, you are done. I was done before my race ever started that, that night. Justin Grantonet, Team Mez, Thomas Mezrals on the outside. I'm so pissed off, I said, get me out of here. I am not gonna watch this race. Mm, again, I didn't even get to, like, I got one straightaway. Yeah, da, 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 I hit the chip, so I think the gear's all right, but I, I just I need more, you know? At least it took out Larson, too. <laughs> Can't have him win everything, you know? I was obviously trying to do everything I could to get back into NASCAR. People are doubting whether or not he should get reinstated. The fact of the matter is we know people cannot consistently perform in a manner that is inconsistent with who they really are. His body of work suggests that he's really the real deal. Tony Stewart was trying to convince people on his team to hire me. When the stuff with Tony's team wasn't gonna work out, I was like, okay, like I'm just gonna commit to running sprint cars the rest of my life and go win a World Outlaw Championship. Breaking news this afternoon. Kyle Larson has been reinstated by NASCAR. Hendrick Motorsports announced Wednesday that the team has signed Kyle Larson to a multi-year contract to drive the number five Chevrolet beginning in 2021. Here is a statement from NASCAR. NASCAR continues to prioritize diversity and inclusion across our sport. Kyle Larson has fulfilled the requirements set by NASCAR and has taken several voluntary measures to better educate himself so that he can use his platform to help bridge the divide in our country. How is it in today's society do you capture redemption? It's definitely going to take a lot longer than just you know, these six months to uh, you know, really get people to forgive me and, and get to see who I really am. I think that people want you to succeed. I think people want you to come out of this changed. Are you guys ready to see Kyle Larson? 
What's I up, wasn't, Kyle I wasn't sure Jeff was ever going to stop talking. I know, man. You get me going. Prior to him coming to Hendrick Motorsports, he thought, oh, Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon, they, you know, they, they only want me to drive a cup car. I want to know when you finally got convinced that we wanted you to be here, but we wanted you to be here and get to drive all those other cars, too. Well, I don't think that was a false thought, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, we may have come around a little yeah, bit. So, um, no, I, I was I was very, very surprised. And I'm still surprised that I get to race as much as you guys let me. And it's awesome that our, uh, our bosses let us go have some fun. Dad, stop talking like a baby. Oh, and another one! <laughs> okay, that's enough. Give me okay. that. <laughs> Why do we have that? Because I was late to staging. <laughs> That's what they gave it to you? Yeah. Are you keeping the horns? Yep. Yay! When you guys start acting bad, I'm just going to blow it. Oh, why? Because y'all are crazy. <laughs> Let's try and go fast. She ran. I think a 101 that time. Was that good? But you got to run wide open in those corners I told you to. Try to keep up with me for at least one more. Remember, wide open. If you don't hammer down, I'm going to bump you. OK. Why? Somebody spun out. I want to see you spin out. Yeah, I want on exit. On though. exit, though. On Here, come on. If you spin out on entry, though, that's not good. You can't see. That's why we should just take your head sock off. You don't no. need it. There. Okay. All right, go ahead, Owen. I do not think I'm a good coach. I wouldn't say that I am either because I'm so competitive that I'm just like, what are you doing out there? So I have to sit in the stands. But yeah, no, he's not either because Kyle tries to explain things to him. He says like, Open your entry up. Explain what you mean by open your entry. I don't even know what that means. So he's working on it. When you worked with your son Owen um, and his racing, is there anything from that you take away and say that that could actually help me? I don't think so. Owen is starting to understand what famous means, I think, when we go places and people recognize Kyle or recognize Owen, honestly. He thinks he's more famous than me. He says all the time, like, oh, Dad, I'm more famous than you. My name's Owen, and I race and play baseball, and, I, and I'm, uh, I'm seven. So next time we go out, please, I'm going to turn the camera on, and I want, you to, I want to see you go wide open in this corner. You're gonna have to get through it though. I'm not nervous at all when Owen gets in the car. Yeah! <laughs> like, go! If you saw me standing on the fence watching their racing, I've got a smile on my face most of the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You're gonna get whiplash. Well, you try to stone, don't break. Uh-oh, watch out, Owen, don't get it! <laughs> All right, don't wreck, don't wreck, don't wreck! Whoa, whoa! When Owen started racing, it was 2020, 2021. So those are the years that Kyle was just knocking out wins week after week. And so Owen would go to race and he'd finish last and he'd come in and be like, Dad, how, how come I didn't win? They don't understand that it doesn't come that easy, but it does for Kyle. But Owen just didn't understand why it didn't come that easy for himself. I kind of fear what they might go through trying to come up as racers, especially Owen, because he's a boy. If he continues to race, he's going to finally start tuning in that people are comparing him to his dad or his Uncle Brad. Man, that's going to be something very, very hard to live up to.
fun out. You didn't see him? No. Uh, did you run into him? I don't feel like he has to be that kid that follows in his dad's footsteps and maybe has all that pressure his whole life. I don't know that he's the person that can handle that. But um, if he wants to, then, you know, we'll give him the opportunity. I fear for Owen of uh, just not getting the same kind of opportunities where he could do it anonymously and quietly and, and develop. I don't know that he'll have that opportunity. We are underway as Adam and Owens makes it back Hunter White. The Warner Larson's going to spin in front of the field and collect a couple. <laughs> That's part of it sometimes. To be able to have the group of friends and the little boys and girls running around everywhere and playing, those are the memories. I mean, Kyle still talks about those memories. Playing tag or playing hide and seek, playing football. That's all stuff that like Owen gets to experience now at Millbridge and it's somewhere where our kids can grow up racing for a long time. Hey, we gotta go. They're pushing them out. Timez down the inside will pick off the 71E. He goes to second with a nice little delicate move. Races to the cushion for the 7X car. Sets his sights. On is a 19M car up front. Watch him rip a tear off. Coming out turn number two and getting ready to go to business. Ethan Mitchell picks up the win. Timez will go second. Mariah Eat, Bray Co for Bryant Wiedemann. Your top five. Thomas Mesrol, he was coming. He was coming. Didn't get there in time, though, much to his chagrin. You know, I really wanted to win that heat race, but, uh, you know, the, the 19 was fast, you know, so I couldn't quite catch him. So we're making some adjustments on the car, and we're going to get this thing up front. Can I hold the mic? Georgia showed up with a microphone. That is for Team STV. Well, the YouTube channel of Thomas Mesereau. Welcome back to Team Mez TV. We were, you know, killing time late at night, so we pulled up his YouTube channel, and it's just funny. We are at Venice Beach, yes! Originally, I really just wanted to create some more shirt sales. You know, on Mondays, I get my girls off to school, and then I go back in and I edit. It's very good that he's doing that. I think it's one more thing that brings the fans closer to the sport. <laughs> There's always stuff going on. You know, some nights you don't even know what you have. I get back home and I'm like, oh, I caught that crash. And I didn't even see that. I actually had a firework blow up inside my car. That's my best YouTube video. Go check it out. Getting some concessions. I got me a snow cone. Just kind of taking a little break. They're doing some track work and stuff. So she just said hi to me. Oh my God. It's tough to look at yourself on camera and then you're, you have to talk and you have to say the right things. And um, it is, whose key is this? Because I lost a set of keys to my apparel trailer and this is exactly what it looks like. That is probably yours then. Oh, it's probably been here that whole that time. That's great. <laughs> I only have one key left. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just like, this is important. This is, you guys are so important too, but this is, uh, I'm down to my last key from my peril trailer. That's how I make my living. That's how I make my money. So, um, anyways, take two. How's it going, buddy? Got your Kyle Larson shirt on, I see. Yeah, but he says he needs a new one. Give me knuckles. I drive this one right here. Bright pink. It looks like a girl, but boys drive pink cars too. That's the cloud. Yes, the monster. See, I spend most of my week just uh, following these two and cleaning up after them. I mean, literally. Huh, isn't that what I do most of the time? What is on your face? Oh, it's just taco sauce or something. My four-year-old, her name is Tommy, and she is like mini-me. My oldest is Carly, and she's her mom. <laughs> ah, you got a better start. 
girls love racing. Uh, they love being at the track. I think they sense the spotlight, you know? A few times that we get to take pictures in Victory Lane and stuff, like they just glow. Do you ever want to race? Do you want to race? No, you don't want to race. What about you, Carly? No. Cheerleaders, hopefully. I'm gonna go as soon as you say ready. Ready. Now with Audrey, I think she's a little bit different case because she's a girl. The comparisons to her dad and Uncle Brad may not mean as much to her, I don't know. My daughter Audrey, I feel like she's gonna be the racer because she's a tomboy. She wants to be part of the boys and playing in the dirt and she's just very intense, like you can see it in her eyes. If she wants to tell you something, she's gonna tell you. Hey, let me have it. Get a racing car. I said I'm ready, Audrey is so sassy. That was Audrey. Is she always messing with you? Mm-hmm. I just want to hit her. <laughs> just her attitude. She's a toughie, and she's got an opinion. I gotta get in. Like, I want to go to the races and disappear. Like, Audrey goes to the races and wants to be around me and get in the car. No, 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 I don't need you to right now. She wants to race, uh, which makes me excited. I, I think that's great. A little nervous because I feel like she's got a bit of a temper. She's feisty. I'm afraid like if some kid gets into her, she doesn't want to go fight. Maybe at four years old isn't the best time to start for her right now. I mean, she's already told Dad, I want a car, and I want to start practicing, and I want a uniform, and I want a helmet, and all that stuff. So Dad's gone out and gotten all that in the last month or so. You want to do five laps? Good entry. We'll give, we'll give you the. Laps. Okay. Four left. Good entry. No, two left. Four. There's a push out there to get girls up, especially to NASCAR. Way better than me. I said, Owen, oh, how's she doing? He said, She's better than me. <laughs> I just have this feeling that Audrey, she's got the potential to be the next big time racer in this family. Championship weekend, I was pretty at peace, I think, with how ever the weekend was going to turn out because I'd already had a great season to that point. I look back on it and it, it kind of feels like a dream. I wish I could go back and like relive it. But definitely on that day, I mean, it, it was just a, a different kind of nervous of, just please let this happen. It just seemed like there in the second half, he just was having a harder time staying at the front. I think I was running fourth and thinking like, man, like I can't believe that I'm gonna not even have a shot to win the championship. With 50 laps to go, I mean, I was pretty much just sitting there in the grandstand, just kind of looking at my feet, just thinking, man, this is, this is hard to watch. It just doesn't look like they have the speed now to get back to the front. And a caution does come out. That means a restart. But then the, <laughs> the miracle yellow came out. I knew that was going to be our final time down pit road. I tried to be as aggressive as I could be on my pit road speeds. But man, my pit crew did a heck of a job. Kyle Larson lead on a close drag race. Gained three spots for Larson there. Incredible. That's it. The move of the race so far. The greatest pit stop in the history of NASCAR. And got me out into the lead. The five surging out front. The pressure as high as it's ever been. Now, one lap to go. Unbelievable. 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 How about that pit stop? Great job, man. Awesome. Pick crew, 
This is all on you guys. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people probably think things came easy for Kyle just because he's won so many races and everything. But I mean, I know where he started, you know, going back to him saying, I'm going to make it in Cup. This is like an overnight sensation. Everybody is all of a sudden saying, who in the heck and where did this kid come from? And he did just what he said he, you know, could do. I think I was still in a little bit of shock, and then everybody expects the celebration, so then I had shotgunned six beers. It probably started sinking in, like, once you know, there was nobody really left at the racetrack besides our team. Maybe until I was not hung over it sunk in. <laughs> Justin just got done with the B main, and that fool just went from like dead last to second. So well, let's go see if he's got any pointers. Well, slide yourself a lot. Slide, slide or die. Just slide yourself. Slide or die. Yeah, yeah. Good job, buddy. Thanks. My dog, Justin, killed it. From the C to the B to the A, that's how we do it over here at RMS Racing. Sup, bro? You gonna put my tear off on for me? I'm kidding, I'll do it. It's Indianapolis, so I want all the chances. New tear-offs, new shield, the best division, all the tear-offs, because sometimes, uh, oh, got ahead of myself. The camera did it. You need to be my signal guy on top of the trailer. I'll look for you under yellows. You tell me where to run, all right? If you want me to run the top, point up. If you want me to run the bo bottom, you got to point to the bottom. In the middle, just rub your tummy, OK? I'll look for you under yellows. Thank you. Love you too. When I started out, I went from quarter midgets uh, to micros. I ran a modified, I ran a pavement late model, and then I, I hopped in a guy's midget, and it was just kind of a fluke. I hop in this thing, and it was just like I fell in love, you know, instantly. The sound, the power, the out of control, you know, controlling something that is out of control. It's a four wide salute to the race fans coming out of turn number four. Get ready to make some noise, race fans, for these wicked machines of mayhem, these four cylinders of fury. It is the USAC NOS Energy Drink National Midget Series on parade. Kyle Larson has qualified in 10th position and Timez in 11th. And Justin Grant is starting from the back. These three drivers have a lot of ground to make up and only 39 laps to do it. 39 laps is not very quick, not when it's chaos every single lap. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what time is it? That's right, time to drop the hell off. Good start down in the corner, Mitchell Bowles around the outside, wants the race lead right away, Kenna McIntosh says nay nay, not today. Zero eight car is going to be first one into turn number three, first one coming out turn number four. Three wide, back behind. Ethan Mitchell on the outside, contact got one over already. Tail the field, unfortunately I believe that was Dale Reimer caught up in that back there. Where our pit was, you, know, you could see the trailer really good under cautions, and every caution would come out, I'd look up there and he'd be like pointing to get down, because I was, you know, trying to dust off the middle, and I was like, okay, he's right, like I should be down, like that's the fastest part of track. Larson off to go to the high side along with Tevez, Thomas Bezrol. I started behind Kyle, so I was kind of just keeping my eye on Kyle, and I seen him shoot to the top and was like, all right, it's go time, let's go. Kyle currently scored eighth, but he just started passing cars, and I think that was by design. So that's just sort of knowing when to hit that go switch, and well, Kyle Larson knows all about that. I feel like I can make speed in a midget still. Here comes Kyle. Holy smokes, is he fast. I'm just a little more calculated than I used to be. You know, it's all about building momentum, building momentum with midgets. And the Odyssey of Justin Grant has been something special to watch. Just now, scored to the ninth spot. Now to turn number four, Sparks the flying off the front minder. The number 86, he gets that thing rotated around, but he is making some serious hay on the top side. And Mesrol not leaving him far. He follows right directly behind Kyle. Kyle goes low, Mesrol goes low. It's kind of like
like math, you know, two plus two is four. When I start climbing up on a car, when I'm driving up to them, I just peel off and run a slide job. It's just what I do. Kyle's usually the car to be, you know, so I get by Kyle and I'm like, well, heck, I think we're good. Midget racing is really tough right now, and well, the field's way more competitive. So for me, the whole race, I kind of just felt like I was in defense. It's tough because the cars are trying to flip over. You can't have one mistake, and that is an eerie feeling. The midgets are difficult because of the short wheelbase, the high horsepower, and they're very twitchy for the drivers to drive. That's why I don't drive them. I get nervous, yes, because I know what the results can be. Fields, we got one up and over. Hang on to it. Man, when Moles went over, I thought I was done. Tough tumble for the 89 car, Mitchell Moles. I actually jump on the brakes. It stalls the motor and started itself back off. If I peel off and I miss it, it had to have been inches. See, that puts Timez in the third spot. Suddenly things are bunched up, and this could be his moment. Yes, yeah, Mesro here at one of the uh, podium spots at this point in time for the number seven X car rolled off 11th on the field. 11 laps remain. As, as hang on to it. Mesro got himself piked up down the corner. I picked up the big bounce and I, I fell back a couple spots, but you know what? I don't give up. I just don't ever give up. Justin Grant moves into third. He's watching it all from back behind. And the caution oh. flag comes out. If you're Justin Grant right now, you're thinking the Red Sea Bay part. Dude came from the C main to the B main to the front of the A. I probably pulled up and was just like, dude, where are you coming from? There's this moment when things are so intense and you have to be so focused. There's not an ounce of room anywhere else in your body to think about anything other than what you're doing in that moment. These things are scary, you know, they're dangerous. Racing obviously is dangerous. It's taken friends of mine. Brian Clawson was one of the best drivers ever and you know, he got killed doing it. A big impact. I've crashed a lot since then and you know, something like this has not slowed me down. Even if you are the best, even if you are at the top of your game, it's something that we all live with. Three laps to go. McIntosh down on the inside. Close one. Going to try to turn it. Here comes Justin Grant as well. Back behind Kyle Larson as well. Me, Justin, and Kyle all got into this war. Kofoy deep down into the corner. Takes him across now. Two laps to go. That when those guys got battling at the end, you know, my only hope was that a couple of the good cars would get taken out and then I could have a shot. Look at him go. Obviously bummed because I didn't win, but also bummed because I just never felt like I had an opportunity to, to drive up there and battle for the win. You have to be perfect every time you hit the track, and, and we were off just a little bit. Oh. It looks like we're about to kiss the bricks. That's like Indy's thing is you, know, you win there, you, you kiss the bricks. Buddy, he looked like he was making love to the bricks, so um, I, I wasn't quite as intimate with the bricks as he was. So yeah, after the race, I, I said, you know, I'm gonna win this next year. I hope someday I can be the only guy that's kissed the bricks on the dirt track as well as for the Indy 500 and whatever we end up racing on in NASCAR. Dirt racing, preferably open wheel cars, is the last great American sport. Dirt racing, or becoming a, a professional dirt driver, I think represents the American dream almost to a T. It does not bring as much corporate backing as you see in other sports. 
you show up and you work hard to make it happen. And eventually, if you work hard enough, it does happen. In our sport, you have to earn it. And I think that it'll probably remain that way. It doesn't always seem like a dream because it's not easy, you know? It's a lot of work, it's a lot of hours. I am four nights in a row at the track. I've been to bed at three o'clock every single night. It's a lot of heartache, it's a lot of injuries. Um, it's, it's not an easy life. It just never stops because we're on the road, we're traveling. But at the end of the day, I've worked my whole life to get right here. Thank you so much. I appreciate all you do for our sport. And I, I love that you come here and do this, it's awesome. All right, have fun, go get him, all right? All right, thank you. Is he good for the sport? Absolutely, Kyle's absolutely good for the sport. I'm sorry, NASCAR, I'm sorry, Daytona, but this is the biggest race I've ever won. He's drawn a ton of eyes back to what we do. I think it's put a lens of seriousness back over what we do and that it's not some lesser form of racing. We're green at Lakeside. This year, Brad and I announced our new series, the, the High Limit Sprint Car Series. It's just different. It's kind of new and exciting, uh, middle of the week. Obviously, the race teams are super pumped, um, you know, to race for 50 grand on a Tuesday night. Oh my God, that's the most money I've ever won in my life. I need to, I need to find a casino quick. Hopefully, we can look back on this in 10, 15, 20 years and be like, you know, we made such a big impact on the sport of sprint car racing positively that we've reshaped the way that these teams make money, the drivers make money, and built it into to something bigger than what it was. That's the kind of stuff I love to see him get into. I mean, I'd rather see him do that kind of stuff than own a sprint car team because it helps everybody. He thinks about how he can better the sport. That's what his legacy to me is because he can't race forever, but he could be a huge part of the sport till the day he dies. And the check flag means the race is finished. To give you an idea of what I do, here's the tape for you to watch today. I hope you enjoy what I learned you love. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kyle Larson. My parents took me to my first race when I was three weeks old and really been going ever since. We're out here tonight. It's beautiful weather. It's 70 degrees outside. There's no wind. My parents, Mike and Janet, and my sister Andrea, you guys all sacrificed so much for me to achieve my dream to become a race car driver. It wasn't always easy, but you've stood by me no matter what. Off at turn number four, the second man ever to do it! Fulfilled for Last April, we didn't know where our lives were headed. NASCAR driver Kyle Larson is suspended indefinitely. I'm just going to commit to running sprint cars the rest of my life. When Kyle started running all those races, people just fell in love with that. I didn't know it in the moment, but those hard times made me a better person and made us a stronger family. I'm lucky to spend this life with you, Caitlin. At least from stories that my parents told me that I had a lot of confidence as, as a kid that I was going to make it someday and going to make it a living out of racing. I've really just poured my heart and soul into making it as a race car driver.